Yo, what's good, guys? Welcome back to another Attack on Titan. This is epi uh, this is episode three of season four. Obviously, I got to bang out the Christmas jumper. It says Bar Humbug on it. Wait. And it's got a picture of a dog, man. I love dogs. Anyway, so episode two, a bit of a slow one compared to the first episode, but a lot of detail about Marlians and how they kind of operate. But basically, we had Zeke, uh, Reiner, Galliard, Piek. They were basically saying that because of the Middle East, the Middle East army that they defeated, like others are going to be thinking like that. So the rest of the world are going to be creating weapons because as as time goes on the technology advances so i think zeke wants to prove to himself and the malians that they are capable of taking back paradise island because the news spread quite quick when they had to retreat from paradise island and the fact that they were in a war for four years against the middle east lot like news travels quick and i think more countries or other communities kind of thing they're all building up something to go against the malians as well obviously the malians want to be the most powerful people in the world but they don't actually they don't have all the titans man they don't have all of them and the titan that they want to get back the most is the founding titan which erin has um that's Zeke's like main goal is to get the founding titan off Eren. And to do that, they obviously have to go to Paradise Island. So they have like they got no choice. Otherwise, they're just going to keep getting like ma uh, not massacred, but kind of preyed upon by the others, like the other people out there who want to take over the world. And because the Malians don't have all the titans, like that could be this could be at them at their weakest. So. They're at their most vulnerable, basically. But then we heard that the uh, the Warhammer Titan could be making an appearance. He hasn't been involved at all, apart from back in the day, where with the Great Titan War. That's like the last time he was involved. We haven't seen him during this anime yet, but I think we will in episode three, because I think Zeke said that the Tiber family are going to make an announcement like they're inviting all the vips over to have a meeting or something so i'm hoping we see that in this episode that i'm about to watch i still don't know what reiner wants as well i've reiner's a bit of a confusing guy at the moment man like he spent all those years pretending to be a soldier when he's actually a warrior but i think it kind of got to his head in it like he was a bit confused i don't think he really knew where he was uh what side he was kind of on but he, he had Bertolt there to like keep him in check. But now that Bertolt's gone, Reiner's mind is going to be running wild. So I'm going to keep my eye on Reiner. I've got a feeling that he's going to do something, man, to go against the Marlians or something. like that's, that's what I'm getting anyway. But whether or not that happens, I don't know. Obviously, by saying that, it could be ridiculous. But we'll see. I think there's, I think there's a twist with Reiner to come. But yeah, um, I kind of just want to get into episode 3 of season 4. Okay, so this is it. This episode is called The Door of Hope. Let's go. ネオマレジンになりたくないらしいな。お前ら知ってるか。あと数年でパラディ島に攻撃を仕掛けるってさ。やった。That's <笑> I hate sometimes, I I kind of hate that I have to just read the bottom. I can't even look around to see, like, any of the faces to see if I can see who they are. And then I fucking, I miss subtitles because of it, man. Like, I've constantly got to be looking right down. 
俺たちの任務をバカにするのかそれともお前はエルティア復権派の残党かはあそうだろ間違いない俺が隊長に報告してやる天命さっけんなこの野郎よせポルコポルコ He wasn't picked then because I don't recognize that name. Unless that's the Warhammer Titan. No, it's not Kami. そしたら俺は世界一の自慢の息子になれるんだ。はあ、なんか大きめかな。ここにいたんだ。アギトの巨人は強襲型だ。小国な分に最も素早く強力な爪と顎で大抵のものは砕ける。ま、そうや。東京技術でここまで恐ろしい兵器になっちまうとはな。何よりやつの血には秘めた力がある。ブラッド、いや。ロイヤルブラッド、メイト。アスフォレイズ。島の悪魔どもには同情しちまうよ。
Child soldiers consisting of Eldian devils under command of the Mali army. They undergo harsh training and are selected based on their grades, skills, behavior, personality, and devotion to Mali. As only the Eldian devils can inherit the nine titans, the existence of Eldians is crucial for the defense of Mali. As such, Eldians selected to become warriors are granted only Malian status along with their immediate family. あれは明け方だった。やけに家畜が騒がしくて身になれない地響きが次第に大きくなって、それが足音だと気づいて急いで窓を開けたら、その後は覚えてないが、馬に乗って逃げたんだ。ちょうどお前らぐらいの子供を
Uh, he was a bit pissed off at Reiner. He was, he's kind of had a thing against Reiner from the start. Uh, and Reiner actually got the armor titan, but then Marcel apologized to Reiner, saying that he actually spoke for Reiner to get the armor titan over his brother because he wanted to save his brother. He didn't want his brother to get into this whole mess. That's why he bigged up Reiner. And I think that's why he was apologizing to Reiner because he felt bad that he put Reiner in this position. Maybe he thought Reiner wasn't the right person for the armor titan role but it looks like everyone's fucking wrong because ever since that scene marcel got fucking eaten by ymir and he got captured and bertolt lost to fucking erin and armin so the only survivor left is actually reiner who nobody thought would be good for the role of the armor titan we saw annie man annie fucking beat the shit out of reiner as well like proper kicking him in the face he could, she could have killed him there and then, but I don't think she cared. As far as she saw it, Marcel was kind of the leader of that group and he died. So Annie was like, we need to get the fuck back home because this ain't going to work. But Reiner was like, if we go back home, we're just going to get eaten and replaced. Like, is that what you want? So Reiner, was actually, Reiner kind of still wanted to prove himself, even though it was just three of them. Uh, it makes me think, actually, if Marcel wasn't eaten... And he could still turn into Jaw. Like, I think they would have got the Founding Titan back. Or would they have? I don't know. With an extra Titan there at their disposal. They probably would have gotten the, the, the Founding Titan back from Eren. And Falco, man. Falco really wants to be the Armoured Titan over Gabby. He's like... He really doesn't want Gabby to get the Armoured Titan power. He wants it for himself. I don't really get why. He kind of had that little spat between him and himself and Reiner last episode on the train. And Reiner kind of had a pop at him and said, look, I'm going to report you to the highest authority if you say something like that again. So Falco may... Falco might be a bit like Reiner in that sense. I'm not sure. I'm not really sure what Falco's objective is. Like his own objective. He wants to be the Armoured Titan. Now, he might want to prove himself to his family, just like Reiner wanted to. Reiner wanted his father to be a part of the family, but he never could. And he even said that his mum, his mum's dream was never going to happen, and she knew it. Because, like, Marlians and Eldians, they just, the, his dad was like, they're going to hang me if they find out. Also, as well, we, we knew it already, but Marcel gave his life. For Reiner. And I think the fact that Reiner found out that Marcel bigged him up to take the Armour Titan's place. And then he sacrificed himself from Ymir. Like, that's twice. Like, in quick succession, Reiner is kind of in debt to Marcel. And I think with those two happening all at once, I think that kind of spurred Reiner on to become the warrior that he needed to be. He's kind of, he, Reiner's a bit like Eren in that sense. He's he has a lot of self doubt and he keep he keeps questioning himself. Like I think it was episode five or four of season one when uh, Bertolt and Reiner appeared again and Reiner smashed the gate. You thought like when you when you're watching that scene for the first time, you're thinking fucking hell, what a powerhouse that is, man! Like who is this guy? He's fucking insane. But then this episode, you get an insight to what Reiner was actually thinking on the fucking, on the charge to the wall to, to break it. And still he was even, like, he was questioning himself still. Like, I don't know, like, it just goes to show, like, don't judge a book by its cover. Because, like I said, in, in the first season, when you're looking at the Armored Titan, you're thinking he's a fucking boss. But actually, he was even questioning his own shit even like during the run-up to the wall rose to breach the fucking wall yeah i think what's what's spurring reiner on the most is i think his mum or like his family in general and the fact that marcel kind of saved him kind of twice almost that's kind of spurring him on um we didn't really see that that much of a close connection between reiner and berto i thought he would have done 
because Bertolt was there a lot for Reiner in the later episodes. But when Annie was kicking him in the face, Bertolt didn't really do anything. Maybe they were just they they were still getting to know each other, maybe. But surely they they should know each other quite well because they're 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 like the chosen ones. They're supposed to work together and work as a team to retain or get back the founding titan but if they're not all getting along and there's conflict within the candidates itself the mission ain't ever the mission ain't ever gonna work because everyone needs to get on and everyone needs to have their own like not individual plan but they need one big plan that they can all follow and there's no trouble no arguments or anything but episode three just then it was a bit of an insight to the complications of all of them growing up like they all wanted to be the best but like i don't know they were trying to boost all of their own egos um by being the best but i don't know there was there was just a lot of conflict between themselves something else i picked up as well at some point uh in that episode you had reiner on one side of the wall and erin on the opposite side of the wall both like thinking slash dreaming about their future like at the same time like looking up and i think it gives a, it gives a great insight into reiner's like past because this whole time you're thinking reiner is just this dickhead i think reiner and erin are a lot alike each other but they just neither of them really realize it like both of their dreams are kind of the same obviously they're fighting on different parts but they both kind of want the same thing, and when right and when um, when Erin was on the floor, kind of having a sulk, Rana was like, "I believe you. Don't you want to? You wanted to kill all the Titans, don't you? I believe you. You can do that." Like, Rana was, as a soldier, he was still lifting Erin up when Erin was down. Like, Rana could have easily not said anything because in his mind they're all devils like they've got devil blood in them they're all fucking idiot they're all devils and the fact that he showed a bit of compassion towards Erin when Erin was kind of down I don't know it kind of showed mm, Reiner does have like a, a bit of a conscience and he does have morals and the whole plan as well I think I've said it before I said I, I questioned it ages ago I remember saying to myself how did Reiner Annie and Bertolt like, why did they even bother joining the Survey Corps when they just want to destroy the whole, like, War Maria, Rose, Cena? Like, why couldn't they have just done that to begin with? But we found out, because Marcel died with the jaw, like, their attack became kind of weak. Like, they wouldn't be able to pull it off as they planned because now they're one Titan less. So I think it was Reiner's plan to actually infiltrate the Cadet Corps, which luckily had Erin, Mikasa, Armin in, which is like, it's so coincidental, but I guess that's just part of the story, man. It's part of the story. Anyway, I think I've rambled on for long enough. Sorry if I didn't um, cover anything that you guys wanted me to cover. I think one more thing, actually. I've forgotten his name. Porco? I think Porco was the brother of Marcel and Porco actually does have the jaw titan now who took it back from Ymir I think anyway I think yeah Marcel and Porco are brothers so once Marcel died and Ymir's or when Ymir took over Marcel's power and then they recap or they re not recaptured Ymir Ymir voluntarily went back with Reiner and Bertolt but I'm guessing Porco took her power. So now he must be fighting for his brother's name, Marcel. I think he is. I think he is doing that, man. And he doesn't trust Reiner at all. Marcel gave his life for Reiner. And I don't think Porco knows that. I think his name is Porco anyway. Porco Galliard. And I think they call him Galliard because he's the last... Because Marcel's dead and there's no other Galliard. But his name's Porco, I think. I don't know. But anyway, I'm going to stop it there, guys. So thank you guys for watching this reaction to episode 3 of Attack on Titan Season 4. 
If you enjoyed this reaction, you can watch the full reaction to this episode over on my Patreon. You can also watch the full reactions to episodes 1 and 2 of season 4. You can also watch the full reactions to every episode of Attack on Titan. So that's season 1, 2 and 3. Every reaction to every episode so far is on my Patreon in full. And if you're watching this episode on YouTube, this is episode 3. Uh, that would mean that episode 4 of season 4, Attack on Titan, is on my Patreon as well, in full. Thank you guys for watching again, and I'll see you for episode 4. Take it easy.